we're going up and uh, in fact we have to swim a, a kind of river by the time we got here it's a, it's a vast forest to be precise and you can see it's, it's dense dense forestation and how could somebody come here We're almost at the, at the, we have to, we have to navigate this river, in fact. Now this is the, this is the stream we have to wait. You can just imagine, this is the only access to where the crime is being perpetrated. And you can see it's like a stream flowing I don't know what to call this. Would they call it a lagoon? What? And this is the only access. You can see people crossing now to get to the place. Mario <laughs> It happened on Saturday morning that a Rusty Police Command was alerted about a discovery around the um, Sonyo area of Ibadan. And um, what actually happened is this. A young man on Friday, a, motor, a commercial motorcyclist, on Friday, took somebody, a billion rider, well known to him, to somewhere around the area of Bado. But on his way, we were told that he started receiving a persistent phone call on his phone. And uh, the person calling was so persistent to the extent that the, this young man had to park to talk to him. And the person had said, oh, um, please come and pick me to towards the um, Soka area of Ibadan. And we learned that the commercial motorcyclist actually turned back with his passenger because the passenger is like a friend too, known to him. And they both went and saw this person. And he now said, look, I need to go and drop this person on my motorcycle to Bodija. I need to drop him off at Bodija. And when I'm done, I'll come and pick you. And when he, he, he finished doing that, he now picks like a younger brother of his, a cousin of his. And when 
want to put this other person because the other person too is known to him. They they were all living. They they, they are all known to themselves. So he now felt that dropping this other person at Sokai, I would not be the only person that would not drive back to his house. And unfortunately, that was the last we saw of them. So on Saturday morning, they did not see them. They did not see the commercial motorcyclist. They did not see the person they had to escort him down to go and put this person to Sokai. So we learned that his family members, his relatives, started looking for him. And um, as they got towards this uh, uh, Okupa Bridge, Okupa River Bridge around uh, Sonyo, they now saw a commercial motorcycle, a motorcycle that was there under the bridge. And they were now like, oh, could it be that they had an accident or something happened? So they saw the motorcycle and they alerted the police. And we went there, our policemen went there from Sonyo Division, recovered the motorcycle and then assist them to, to look around for the uh, missing persons. So when they could not find the police, now told them that okay, they could go further down the riverside. Maybe they may wash the way or something. So as they were doing all of that, that was when much later they got to this um, isolated building. And when they got there, they met some people, according to them, in chains. So they now called the police, called the local government chairman, called some people, notable people in the society. And by the time, between the time they called and the time people got there, the police even got there. And they had started releasing the people of the chains on them. So some of them that they released of the chain took to their heels and broke into a run. They ran away. And um, by the time we got there, we met seven people there. And the seven people we met there, unfortunately, one of them dropped dead right on the spot. And uh, we rescued uh, the remaining six people. And with the assistance of the local government chairman, they were taken to uh, their hospital for treatment because they were emaciated, they were highly looking malnourished. And they were just like living skeletons. So they were taken to the hospital for treatment. And that on the search of the area, that was where we discovered that there were dead bodies and lots of bones around with clothes, clothing, different pairs of shoes, bags, you know, in different, different containers. So at that instant, the police went into the matter and never since been investigating. When well, we arrested somebody, one Abidin, who claimed that one brother Mossi employed him to keep watch over the, let me use the word, the inmate or so, in there. And uh, we now arrested about five other people who happened to be security guards to some companies, neighboring companies there, or industries. Why did we arrest them? Because we felt that no matter what happened, because those people that uncovered that place, the relatives of the missing persons, they, they claimed that while they were looking for the missing persons, that was when they started hearing, me, please give us water. So the so police of the opinion that if people who are not in that area could hear that and come in and see people who were acting for water, then these, their neighbors, we definitely know what was happening, especially where we found dead bodies and, and um, um, bones, human bones, skeletons. So they are arrested and they are assisting us with our investigation. So we have six suspects with and us. Uh, and when um, they were searched, some guns, about seven different types of guns, like a single barrel and double barrel guns, were found in their possession with an arrow, their cutlasses. So they are assisting us with our investigation. And I think we did progress of that blame. We have, but I'm, I am not going to talk too much about the progress we are making. We have, because we do not want anything to jeopardize our investigation. What's the condition of the victims that were 
The victims are responding to treatment very well. At Adair Hospital. Good question. Police is not only present. Neither are we God. We do not have the power to do everything and everything. And members of the public are our eyes and our ears. Since there are people staying there and they could not give us information about that. You too, if you have visited that place, it's that that place is, 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 is hidden, it's an abandoned building. It does not look like a place where any human activities could be taking place. But we need members of the public to alert us of things happening. It's when we immediately we were alerted that this thing happened. You see, you saw the police, we moved into it and we went into it. But in as much as police cannot be at every place at every time, there's need for members of the public to desist from being complacent about happenings in the environment. Because the police, there's no, in fact, if the government were to recruit all Nigerians to be in the police, I still make bold to say that all Nigerians cannot be at the same place all at the same time or cannot cover all the uh, all, all space all space available is it possible as we're all here in this office that we still have space by the door that nobody is there but somebody that, that is privy to where my door is maybe outside should be able to allow those of us inside that oh something is about to happen uh, uh, around this door can you please come and check it out so the police is not all knowing we are not all knowing to know everything the members of the public are supposed to be our ears and that's why we keep talking about community policing our phone numbers are out there in fact if you really that accident happened that day i received a call and they called the control room they called the dpo that's to tell you that we have members of the public have our numbers, but that they do not cause, they are claiming that the valley of that area, the village, uh, the community head of that area claimed that it's been there for long, but it did not know that such a thing is happening there. I'm just coming from the House of Oro right now. It's a it's an uphill task climbing, and uh, if you can see right be, behind me is a huge forest because it's it's really thick and it's dense. And uh, uh, right on the background we could see human skulls and bones of people that have been murdered right here in this thick forest called the Hammer House of horror. If we are going to go down to the extreme end, it remains densely thick as well. One begins to wonder how many lives, how many souls, how many people have actually perished in this house of horror. This is Top Web Women's reporting for Sahara TV.